And this is a famous, I'll just, just read it, just a springboard from this principle. But the Bible says here, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, the reason why I think the Bible says leave his father and mother is because you're starting a separate and independent family, right? You're starting a separate and independent family. Once you get married, you are no longer actually part of your mother and father's family. Because, we, yeah, we, we refer to them as our family and everything, but, but in reality, our family starts from a husband and wife and the children. That's a family unit. And society makes up a lot of families. And when you get married, you actually leave your family, and you start a separate and independent family. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 3. Our Bible here talks a bit about the family structure. It says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So we see here that the, the husband doesn't answer to his mother-in-law. The husband doesn't answer to his mother or his father. The husband answers to God because the family starts at that husband and wife and then the children. It's a separate and independent family, just like we have separate and independent churches. You know, this church doesn't answer to another church. This church doesn't answer to some board or some missions board somewhere. It answers to Jesus Christ and it has leaders in this church. Just like the husband is a leader, the church has bishops and deacons. It's a separate and independent entity. And why do I stress this point, right? Because a lot of cultures don't believe this. A lot of cultures don't believe that you're a separate and independent family. And they try and keep, they're like denominations, right? They try and control your family from afar. And this leads to strife because you have a conflict of authority. And you guys have probably experienced in this life because a lot of cultures do this. I don't know, I don't know any culture really that follows this. Do you guys know a culture that follows this principle where when a couple gets married, they're treated as a totally separate family, totally autonomous in authority and practice? No, right? Because parents think that they can, should be able to control their kids, right? And say, you know, well, they're my children. You should do what I say. No, once they get married, you don't have authority over them anymore because they're a separate family. You only have authority within your own family. But a lot of cultures don't believe it. A lot of cultures believe that the family is parents and grandparents and great great parents and you have an obligation to your parents and your grandparents. Because what happens with holidays, right? What happens if, you know, your husband wants to go to his mum's house for Christmas, but the daughter feels that she has an obligation to her mum and her grandparents? Well, now, now you've got a conflict, right? So how do we resolve these conflicts? Well, it's because your family is separate. And as a wife, you're obligated to obey your husband. So wherever your husband wants to spend Christmas, or maybe he wants to spend Christmas in his own house, or, or Easter, that's what you should do. So the reason why you know, I, I believe that this is important, because when, when people believe that family includes parents, includes grandparents, includes extended family, it leads to a lot of strife, because you get your authority structure all, all out of whack. Um, there's, there's multiple authorities in the family. So you need to understand the authority structure so you know how to make decisions. Um, <clears throat> and as well for us as parents, you need to realise this too. I think we need to realise as Christian parents, when our children grow up and get married, we don't have control over them anymore. So don't try and extend your authority and control how they run their life, how they run their children. We need to allow them to grow, allow our sons to grow in their lead role as a husband um, and as a, as a father to their house. And allow our daughters, right, when we're parents of daughters, allow our daughters to submit to their authority. Don't undermine the authority of her husband, you know, and get your daughter to do things that you know are contrary to her husband. You should be encouraging your daughter to submit to the authority, the new authority in her life, which is her husband. Um, yeah, and I mentioned about the holidays. That's usually what happens, right? About holidays, um, or even how you want to do certain things, you know, how you want to treat your children. So, you know, knowing your relationship hierarchy helps you to make these decisions in your life, uh, who you're obligated to. So how should it work? So the way I think it works is, you know, obviously God is first, and then it's your spouse, right? Because your spouse, you're, you're one flesh, right? And, and we, we're meant to be taking, our, taking care of our one flesh. That's the most important relation, hu human relationship, so you have God, then you have your spouse, then you're obligated to your children. Um, what have I got here? 
So God, spouse, children, then, then I think it's your parents. You know, you have an obligation, especially sons, to take care of their parents if your parents can't take care of themselves. Um, then your spiritual family. And then, you know, other people, you know, when, whether that's close relatives or strangers or colleagues or friends or whatever. Um, other than that, I, I, I put them all into the same category, to be honest, you know, extended family and, and friends. You may feel that you have more obligation to extended family just because maybe they've done things for you and things like that. But really, I don't treat them any different to, you know, a friend or a colleague or somebody that I, an acquaintance that I know. It's just somebody that is outside of my family that I don't have a biblical obligation to. <clears throat> so a couple of things from that, you know, so husband and wife is the most important human relationship. So make sure you prioritize it. Make sure you guard it, right, above everything else. Um, you know, in your family, it should, it should always be parents versus children or uh, parents versus grandchildren. It should never be husband versus wife. It should never be boys versus girls, right? I mean, unless you're playing a game. Obviously, that's a joke, but... You know, if you're playing a game, then you, you know, that, that's why it's funny, right? Because it shouldn't be that way. You know, sometimes when I organize the teams for bowling, I split up husband and wife. <laughs> just, just for fun, right? But, you know, when it comes to serious matters, husband and wife should always be on the same team, right? It should, you should always come across as one team to your family, whether it's parents, whether it's children, whether it's friends. Um, you need to guard that relationship. You don't want anything to come in between that. So... If we have this priority, right, then there are things like, you know, don't neglect your family to preach the gospel. You know, as, as, as bad as that sounds, you know, you shouldn't neglect your family to go and preach the gospel. You know, if you're preaching the gospel so much, you know, you love unbelievers so much that you, your family's neglected, you've got your priorities wrong. You know, you need to make sure that you're spending time with your family, that your family, that you love your family more than you love unbelievers. Hey, I'm all for loving unbelievers. This church is all about loving unbelievers, right? But not loving unbelievers more than our church family, not loving unbelievers more than our physical family, which we have an obligation to. So whilst I don't believe you should neglect your family to go soul winning, to preach the gospel, as well, you don't use it as an excuse not to go soul winning. Right? You don't say, oh, I'm loving my family so much that I don't go soul winning at all, that I don't spend any time soul winning, because part of, like I said, loving your family is showing them that good example. So, you know, you know I'm not going to judge you because I don't know your heart, right? So at the end of the day, you know whether or not you're prioritizing your family, whether you're prioritizing soul winning the right way. But I think the principle is there that our family is more important, our church family is more important than unbelievers, but we do also need to find time to reach unbelievers because that's what we're on this earth to do. Um, and yeah, love your church family more than, more than unbelievers. Uh, so this idea of being an independent and separate family, it means don't let in-laws get, get between you, right? Don't let in-laws get between you, especially when it comes to raising your children. You know, when it comes to raising your children, often mothers-in-laws or you know, mother, mother-in-laws, you know, they want to tell you how to raise your children and they want to come in and say, do it this way. I personally believe it's up to the husband, it's up to the father of the house to take a stand for his family. You know, if, if your mother is pushing your wife around, you know, the way that she, you know she doesn't do it or she doesn't want to do it, it's up to you, husbands, to take a stand for your family. I don't believe it's the responsibility of the wife or the mother to take that principled stand for their family. You know, that's, the, that's, a, that's a man's job, to protect the family, to take a stand. You're not only protecting your family physically, right? Like you're meant to take a stand and be, and be willing to die for your family, right? To die for your, husband, for, for your wife. I think it's the same when it comes to spiritual things. You know, husbands, you need to man up and you need to stand up to your in-laws. You need to take a stand. And, and when they're doing something you don't like or is not right, you know, you don't necessarily have to say it in an offensive way, but you have to be the one. It's not, I don't think the onus is on your wife to say, hey, that's not how we do it in this house, you know, and to take that stand. I, I believe that's the husband's job. Um, so I already mentioned, you know, if you're a parent yourself, you know, don't undermine the authority of your daughter's husband. Don't undermine um, the authority of your son in his marriage. Don't make, you know, his wife obey you instead of him. Uh... You know, husbands need to stand up. And yeah, when it comes to in-laws, let me just show you this verse in Ephesians. <coughs> you know, because the commandment to parents, let's just read it here. It says here, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So the Bible clearly commands that children ought to obey their parents. But it's children, isn't it? Because sometimes in-laws will, will misinterpret the command to honour your father and mother. It says, honour thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So we have a command to honour thy father and mother, not to obey your mother and father. Because there comes a time where you're no longer under their authority that you do not need to obey your mother and father. But you do need to honour them. Honor, respect them. And honour them also means monetarily. Meaning we have an obligation to our parents if they cannot financially support themselves anymore, we ought to take them in and honour them and take care of them and pay for them because they raised us. So we have a responsibility and a command to honour our father and our mother but children, only young children that are taken care of by their father and mother that are not married should obey their parents in the Lord for this is right. And it's in the Lord, meaning you don't obey your parents above the Lord. You know, you obey the Lord first, but you have a responsibility to obey your parents in other things that they command you outside of the Bible. So I'm just showing you here that you are an independent and separate family. You don't have an obligation to obey your mother and your father from God. They may try and impose that on you, but um, I think you'll have a lot more peaceful marriage if you realize what God has taught about the family and realize that you're an independent and separate family. So don't let in-laws get between you. And to Kevin touched on this last week, but don't let children get in between you, your, 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 your marriage, right? Because children, they're smart. You know, they'll try and play you one against the other. And Kevin touched on this. That's why you have to communicate Right? You have to know what your standards are. Know how you deal with these situations so that when your child goes to one parent, it's the same answer as if they go to the other parent, then they won't even try. You know, they, they don't even try and play you against each other because they know you're going to give them the same response. You're going to have consistency and you're going to be able to bring up your children a lot better. So don't let your children turn you against each other. You know, and, and mothers especially, don't side with your children against your husband. You know, if your husband's made a decision and you want to do something, you have to go with your husband. You're commanded to do so. You know, so go with your husband's decision, even if you don't feel it's the best decision, if it's not sinful, you need to go with it so that you and your husband come across as one single front to your children. <clears throat> and the last one I just want to mention here today is, so don't let in-laws get between you, don't let children get between you. And the last one I just want to talk about is don't let friends get between you. Um, and, you know, for those of you who are younger, you know, you're going into a marriage a lot younger, you've spent, you, you know, you're very close with your friends. You spend a lot of time with your friends. You have a lot of things that you do with your friends, but don't let your friends get between your marriage. When you get married, that is now the primary relationship. That's the relationship you want to get to the same point, the relationship you have with your friends, right? So work on that. Don't let friends get between you. And one practical thing I want to mention on this topic is keeping secrets. Keeping secrets from your husband or your wife. This is why in my family, I, ha I have a rule that, you know, or, you know we we've, we've been keeping it, I'm sure we've been, I hope we've been keeping it, <laughs> that we don't keep secrets from each other. So I don't promise, I don't promise my friends that I'm not going to tell my wife. I don't promise you guys that I'm not going to tell my wife. If you tell me something, you need to assume that my wife is going to know. And if you don't want my wife knowing, then don't tell me. You know, I do not say, you know, I'm going to keep this promise just between you and me, and I'm not going to tell my wife. I won't tell anybody else. I can make that promise. But I, I will not make that promise that I won't tell my wife. And it's the same with ladies. Don't make these little girl packs with, you, with your friends, right? And say, you know, best friends forever. And keep secrets from your husband. Why? Because if you, you know, this is why I stress so much the whole idea of open communication and proactive communication because it's about building trust, isn't it? It's about building that trust and that loyalty in your relationship and distrust is like leaven. Distrust grows because once you start to not trust your husband or your wife, that distrust will grow and it will grow. And I just think, in my opinion, this is my opinion, that if you keep secrets from one another, even if they're trivial, you know, like even if they're things that like don't even concern me. But just the fact in my mind, just the fact that my wife can make secrets and, and has made promises to keep things from me, in my mind it's just what else will she keep from me? What if it is something that she doesn't feel is important to the family, but it is important? Do you know what I mean? So 
I think it's very important that um, that you do not keep secrets from one another. Don't promise friends and family that you'll keep secrets. You know, this is my opinion. If you don't if you don't agree, that's fine. You know, a lot of these things are my opinions. So, you know, if you don't agree with it, that's fine. Um, but this is just my opinion. You know, if I, I think it's it's dangerous to keep secrets just because it hinders that open and proactive communication that I talked about in the last point. You know, because distrust is like leaven, what I mean, it, it grows and it festers and it can grow to more distrust. Um, so, you know, I would recommend that you have this that rule in your house that, you know, when you talk to people, if they're going to tell you something personal, I tell them up front. You know, if I'm talking with somebody on the phone, they're going to share with me something personal, I tell them, hey, you know, if you don't want my wife knowing this, then don't tell me. You know, but t if you're going to tell me, you need to be comfortable that my wife knows this because I'm going to talk about it with her because I talk to her about everything. You know, and you know if you don't mind, if you don't want my wife to tell if you don't want my wife to know something, then it's better that you don't tell me. Find somebody that is not married to tell them, and then they can keep a secret between um, just you and them. All right, so I'll just I'll just go on those two points. I'll save the next point for next week, but just to cover it again. So, you know, have have open and proactive communication. You know, guard that relationship between your husband and wife, and remember that you're you're an independent and separate family. And that's important because extended family, you know, children number one will be the cause of strife between a relationship where you both are believers and you're both on the same path. Because, you know, I'm dealing with people that believe like us today. And you know, obviously, if you don't, if, if, if a couple, you know, doesn't believe the same thing, they're going to have strife, right? Because they don't, they're not on the same page. How can two walk together except they be agreed? They need to come to the Bible and walk the same way. But let's say you're walking the same way. In my experience, you know, me and my wife, we never really fought much until children came into the picture. Because what is there to fight over, right? You have the same goals, you, have the, you know, you're both trying to serve God, you have the same priorities, you know, what are you fighting over? It comes when children come into the picture and then you're a bit more stressed, right? You're a bit more, you know, they, they're pushing you to further than you are. Now you're responding maybe a bit more aggressively to your spouse. But even more so is extended family. You know, what happens when in-laws come into the picture? Right? What happens when you know, friends and family come into the picture? This is where you'll start to have strife. And if you don't realize the importance of the husband and wife relationship, you don't realize that you're an independent and separate family, there's going to be a conflict of interest, a conflict of authority. So make sure you have the right perspective so that you set the priorities right. So it's very easy to decide, hey, who to follow? Who to obey? Because you know it's God, spouse, children, parents, you know, and then extended family and friends. All right, so I hope that was helpful to you, and I will give you one more tip next week. All right, let's pray.